So first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to join everyone. Um, daytime, evening time. For me, it's evening because I'm in Beijing, China. Uh, this is my first year actually in Beijing, China, after spending almost a decade in uh, Chile in South America. So it's been a lot of uh, new things for me to get used to and transition into. Um, and for us, our journey started at the end of January. We were all in um, on Chinese New Year break. And as you can imagine, that's when it started. So we had teachers and families scattered um, all over the globe. And we had to quickly scramble to get ourselves together. Um, so this is just, um, I be, got involved with School Rubric. Ryan contacted me um, because we're um, connected through mutual friends. And um, so I wrote an article in regards to my experiences um, with COVID-19. And we just finished week 10 of online learning, which seems like an enormously a long amount of time. And sometimes it feels like it, and other times it feels like we've just been doing it a short amount of time. The weeks go by very fast. It's um, pretty intense. Um, and one of the things that I've realized is the connections. I was asked to talk a little bit more about how to stay connected to, to people in the school community, because most of us as educators have gone into education to be with our communities, the, the students, the teachers, the parents. And of course, now we don't have that um, face to face. So we have to do that as we are today, connecting up by different means. So I was having some conversations with my elementary school principal and we decided that we needed to start doing some Zoom calls to check in with our teachers and our teaching assistants. So that's what I started doing just to check in to see how they were doing the one on ones because we're familiar with walking around in everyone's classrooms and checking in physically when we're in the building when that wasn't taking place. And I found that it was very interesting. It was very insightful actually because I was able to find out how everybody was actually really doing, you know, because here in China, most people were um, in isolation. They were being quarantined into not leaving. It wasn't that they were mandated to do so, but they just did it because they didn't want to bump into the virus. Different um, areas of China had different um, regulations of what to do, and everybody was going through their own challenges. Some of them were um, doing their online teaching while having their children at home, which many of you are bumping into as well. So how do you teach full time and have your own children at home with you? Um, some of them were dealing with just how to get the basic necessities of, of food and, and taking care of their basic needs because they couldn't go out. And so when I started speaking with the teachers, this is what was coming forward. And this is where I had to start being more supportive to them in finding out how could I support them so they could do their jobs, just like we do when we're on the ground in the buildings. But this was very different because I really couldn't do a lot, but try to get other supports in place, circle back to my head of school and other people within the administration to see what we could do to some of these, for some of these teachers to help them out. And so it became a lot bigger scope of helping people not just on the academic side, it became more involved in, in helping support their, their well-being and different aspects to, to do that. So really, it, it has strengthened our community. I feel like we were already quite strong, but I think through all of this, it, it became, and it's become a stronger community because of, of how we've helped each other out. So now we have started, some schools in China have already gotten the okay to, to go ahead and start. Here in Beijing, we haven't gotten the okay yet, we're waiting. And part of that is because Beijing is the government, the seat of the government here in the country. And one of our biggest challenges is we still have teachers who have not been able to get back into the country. Many were going to, had tickets already to come back and then, the borders closed. As most of you know, things change. You go to bed, you wake up the next morning, and there's lots of things that have happened while you were sleeping. And um, so we are now looking at how are we going to open up our school and with teachers in almost every continent in the world, 
and, and open up. And so we're talking about having to do blended learning with some teachers teaching remotely, some teachers here on the ground, um, and finding out we may have to take teachers from my division in the early childhood if they've ever had experience in high school, moving up to the high school. And so those are the conversations we're having. We've been told that when we open up, it will just be grade nine and 12 the first week, which sounds very strange. However, in China, it's because those are the two grade levels with the national curriculum that they have exams that they need to take. And so that's been the regulation saying that, okay, th those are the grades. Then hopefully the following week, it will be tens and elevens that will be able to start. And then the following week, they'll add on to the middle school and then elementary school. And it's going to be step by step. And of course, it depends on how it goes as we're open because there's a lot of things that we have to do to get in place. And you can see here on the screen, we've um, our head of school started this, she's calling it our war office. Because when you get to the point where you'll be able to start talking about reopening, uh, whenever that might be, there are so many things you have to think about and just you know simple things as temperature checks distancing you know marking on the floor in in the cafeteria marking on the floor in the hallways when they enter the building um, we're just trying right now to start where families can check out books and there's worries and concerns about books being returned to the library how are we going to disinfect the books so we haven't even begun to talk about how are we going to make sure of disinfecting all kinds of things with the students back in the building? So that's where the whole whiteboard in this office is filled with aspects when we brainstormed last week of all the details of what we're going to have to do to reopen the school. And so it's good that it's a staggered start. And I think that that's an important thing to keep in mind. And I know that most of you aren't even in this position yet of thinking about what to do. But we certainly, just as we shared, those schools here in China shared our journey. And I know there was a lot of documentation that was shared. And Ryan, thank you for mentioning that because it's been amazing to see the international community being so willing to collaborate and work together. That's really the nature of school anyway. And it's great to see that that's happening. So as we go through our re reopening uh, procedures, we will definitely be documenting all of this so that way we, we will be able to share out. And I'm sure all the schools in China will be doing the same. So some suggested tips for you is I know that um, Ryan had already mentioned surveys and we have been doing regular surveys that we um, twice a month we've been sending out to parents because this is a good platform for parents to give their feedback because it is a journey um, because when you first start it's we we didn't become educators to do online teaching and learning right that wasn't the way we were educated so we've all been thrown into having to do this and make up a whole new way of doing it and so we needed feedback you know we say we're partners with parents and so we have to continue that relationship and so we will take their feedback and we'll make changes accordingly if we feel that they're good suggestions it's a way of building that relationship with parents and we've also done it with teachers um, and it's been interesting you know we do get the same too little work, too, too much work for students. And teachers have also been like, it's way more work to teach online than in the classroom. Some teachers are saying, no, it's not as much work, it's less work. So it just really depends on each person. And I think it depends on some of their um, abilities with different skill sets with technology and different aspects of that. And it, it, it changes accordingly. The other suggested tip is make sure communication is crucial. Uh, weekly updates from divisional leads. We've been sending parents um, weekly updates. We've been keeping in touch with teachers regularly. Our head of school actually has been sending out two emails every week to faculty. And she's been trying to, as she learns new things, she's been updating regularly because teachers have a lot of anxiety. It's a different type of anxiety and it's trying to manage that. And um, making sure that counselors are available. We're actually doing a, an all school Zoom meeting next week where we've invited a psychologist to come in and give suggestions and tips and make himself available because 
people are not living in their normal circumstances. And if they're scattered across the world like ours are, they're bumping into family or friends who might be getting the virus. They might be bumping into things that are distracting them from doing their jobs. So communication is important to keep those channels open. And as soon as you know information, it's important to inform your community about those things because it lessens the anxiety. And the other thing is just um, keep your minds open, open mindsets, be innovative. Um, don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, just as we teach students, it's a similar thing, right? This is new territory for all of us and we need to um, continue to try to do new things and show our parents and our students that we're learning too. And that's kind of the process we've been taking through here at BCIS. And then the other thing I just put down again, I can't stress enough of stay connected to your faculty. They need you. They need you almost more now than they do, did when you were in the actual building because they're going through, through things that they have never faced before. And so they turn to you to look for that support and advice and sometimes just simple things. So I want to um, Thank you, Deborah. let you know. Okay, you can reach out to me at any point if you have any questions. Thank you.